It's me, Undead Viking. I'm here to review a game for you. Uh, the game is called Spell Stealers. It's from a designer by the name of Greg Santo. Um, when he described this game to me, he said, It's a push your luck dice game. And I said, Stop! I want to check it out. I really, really enjoy uh, push your luck games, and, and I have always um, enjoyed uh, uh, games of that genre like Can't Stop or um, Dungeon Roll, which is right over there. I can see it. I'm not gonna get up and grab it, but um, I, I like. I've always, if you watch my other videos, you know I, I really dig dice, and um, I always have really enjoyed um, the idea that uh, yeah, I may only have like a you know one in two hundred shot of of rolling you know uh, these three numbers in, in succession, but you know give me the dice and, and let me try because if I succeed, it'll be so epically awesome. Uh, then I'll have a story to tell and um, which is one of the reasons why like can't stop is such a good game You know, it's so simple, but and so straightforward and when I got spell stealers um, I realized that not only does it have the wonderful tension and the dice rolling that a game like can't stop or dungeon roll has But it actually manages to keep everybody kind of focused and involved with the game when it is in your turn. A lot of the problems of the game is that, yeah, you can sit there and you can watch what the other people are rolling, but there really isn't anything you can do. But as you can see, or we'll, we'll see, when I show you how to play Spell Stealers, you'll see that there's actually um, things that you can do while you're watching the other person roll the dice. So, which is the stealing part of the game. But, all right, cool. Well, I'm going to show you how to play the game. It won't take long, and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you exactly uh, what I think. All right, cool. All right, this is the game of Spell Stealers, and this game is for two to six people. This is the game board, and you can kind of see the little track that you're going to be going on, and as you score points, you're trying to get as high as you possibly can. Uh, this is the spot that signifies the end of the game. It is spot number 35. Um, obviously, everybody gets the same number of turns, so if whenever somebody gets this part, um, that would be like... That signifies the end of the game, so you finish off that round, and then whoever ends up with the highest score, that's why their score is higher than 35, whoever ends up with the highest one uh, will win the game. Uh, each person has a little card. They, this, this designates uh, their, their spell stealer, their thief, that's heading into these caverns. They're trying to steal this magical spell that's there. And each side, they have one side with their full color of their picture on one side, and on the back end it's just a, like, a little silhouette of them. Um, this will designate whether on the, on the given turn that is being given, if it isn't your turn to roll the dice, when you attempt to steal uh, the person's roll with the artifact die, you flip that over after you're done with your attempt, whether you are successful or not. Um, each person gets a four-sided die, a 12-sided die, and an eight-sided die. And on your turn, what you will do is you have this die. And you can see that there are dots on this. It's an eight-sided die. It has a yellow and a green, yellow and a green, a red, a green, and so on and so forth. And when you roll this die, you're going to be rolling it see like that's a red you're gonna be rolling it with one of these three artifacts or these dice basically you notice that the uh the eight-sided has both yellow and green the 12-sided has red blue I mean, red blue red green and yellow uh, red, blue uh and the four-sided die has all green so as you could probably guess, what's going to happen is you have all of these dice in your hand when you're getting ready to roll, and technically your your hands are going to be underneath the table, and you're going to pick one of these three dice, and you're going to and you take this die and you're going to roll them together. Now, obviously, like since there's more green on this, a four-sided die, and let's see how well I do. A four-sided die in this die is, is is fairly safe. So you roll these, and so I got the yellow and green, meaning that green is valid. We know that I can only roll green numbers here, and so like if I was purple here, you'd go, you 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 would be able to get two if that was like you decide that's far enough. That's all, all I want to do. But you take this pawn marker and you move it to here, showing you got to got to two points, and then you decide if you're going to roll again or not. So if you say no, I'm done. Two's good enough. 
you move this guy to two, and then you return this to zero, and somebody else gets to go. The next person around the table gets to go. But if you want to keep pushing your luck, you can then say, well, let's try again. And so once again, you will take all these dice, and let's say we're going to pick these two this time, so you're hoping you don't roll red. Let's see what I get here. So I got another two, another yellow, so we'll move that two more. And because I'm just feeling gutsy, let's roll a 12-sided and the color again here. And oh, look at that. Now a green, 10, and I rolled yellow and green. So all of a sudden, bam, I got a huge chunk of points. Now, so I'm in the process of going up to here to 14. I'm probably going to say I'm done, but now this is that moment in any of these rolls before then. Any of the other players can try to steal my roll. Now, to steal the roll, and each player normally will have, and this is if they're smart, they have their dice. They have two dice in one hand and one in the other, probably like this and like that. And when they want to steal, what they have to do is they have to figure out which one of the artifact dice you just rolled, choose the right die, and then roll to try to steal the roll that you just got in the artifact die. And the window of opportunity to do that is the amount of time that it takes the person to go take their pawn, pick them up, and go here. If And as soon as they're handed, they're just, I got my finger on it, that whole thing. As soon as they, they let go, then you can't try to steal it. But in during that process, before before after, as soon as the roll is over, the person can go ahead and roll a 20 side. They're 12 sided. And in this case, I rolled a 12, which is pretty lucky, actually. That would mean they've stolen that roll of 10. And so the red player could go, bam, like that. They've stolen it, they flip that over, they can't steal again for the rest of this, this particular person's turn, but they've just stolen those 10 points. Now, nothing bad happens to purple other than the fact that they just don't get that. They don't lose their turn or anything. They can pick up another artifact and they can try again. But they have to return this back to four, obviously. And so then they can go again. They can go, okay, I'm gonna roll these two this time. And well, I got a six, and so back up to 10. So now they can keep pushing the luck. But then maybe, you know, Blue over here decides, ah, I'm gonna try to beat it. And they roll a seven, so they take it as well. And so then blue goes up to seven, and purple is like saying, why Why doesn't anybody like me? Why is everybody so upset? Oh, I'm sorry, they go six. They don't get the roll they had. Now, if blue had rolled less, then you equal is, is good enough as well. If they had rolled less than that number, you actually lose the number of spaces equal to the die that you, the the thievery die that you rolled. So like if you were here, you lose five and go back to eight. Also, if you roll the wrong die trying to steal what the person rolled, you also lose. If you roll out of turn, meaning that um, you know, you, you uh, like rolled it after the person took their hand off it, you lose that as well. If you've already had your chance to try to steal, like, you know, Blue had already stolen, had forgotten for whatever reason, and they rolled a die, then they'd also lose that. So, and so there's a lot of different ways that just because when you steal and you fail, obviously, there is repercussions as far as that that is concerned. And, of course, even if you, you can't try to steal again um, after you've had your failed attempt, or any attempt for that matter. And so if the other person then says, fine, you know, I'm just done, they, they pass the dice to the next person, and they go. And that's pretty much the entire game. It's, you know, pushing your luck. It's stealing from the other person's, uh, you know, their, their, their roles when you can. Um, and, like, you know, betting on, you know, taking away something good that they had. And, you know, if you don't like the timed thing, you can just, you know, just as a variant, just say, does anybody want to try to steal this one? And then let everybody try to steal and then and move on from there. And when I play this with my daughter um, and my, my, my wife, we kind of play that route because uh, we don't really think it's fair for her to have to make a split decision like that. But And the game still works really well uh, with that variant, with allowing people to like kind of think about whether or not they want to try or not and uh, and so on and so forth. So, but both both types are fine. But I'll, I'll, I'll say that more, explain that more in the uh, in the, in the conclusion here in just a second. But um, I, I like the way the board looks. I, I it's I, I like the way that this, the the very very simple. It's one of those games that like 
The rules, there's like five rules to the entire game, and that's it. And you can teach somebody how to play this in less than ten minutes. And um, it's just a heck of a lot of fun. But let me tell you more about that, like I said, in my conclusion uh, right now. All right, cool, we're back. So there you go. I knew it wouldn't take too long to explain how the game is played. Um, you know, obviously uh, the theme here could have been anything, but I kind of dig the theme a little bit. I mean, I like the idea of trekking through a dungeon trying to steal this magic scroll or what have, or what have you, and um, the fact that they've actually themed the dice uh, to be uh, artifacts. I, 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 I like that, and I, and I think it's a little inspired in a way. Um, now... As I said in the introduction, I really dig Push Your Luck games, I dig dice games, so I knew I was going to enjoy this game. I knew this game was going to fit my gaming group um, to a T, because we are all kind of cut from the same cloth. Now, the difference between a game like this, and as I said in the, conclusion, in the introduction, is that it, it has that aspect of the fact that people can steal your roles. And I really do enjoy that. Now. I know a lot of people are going to be turned off by the timing aspect of it because it's like, okay, so I'm going to roll, you know, you're taking a gamble, you're going to roll like the 12-sided and, and the artifact, the, the matching die. So you roll and like here I got an 8 and a 6, uh, an 8 and a, and a yellow, so I, I actually got what I needed, you know, and so now I'm counting out my 8 or whatever, and that's that little window of time to do it. But... It's more exciting in a lot of ways for like the other people that are sitting there uh, holding onto their dice, getting ready to see if, if you succeeded or not and deciding whether or not they're going to roll. And they have to like, one, see if you're successful, two, pick the right die, and three, roll the die before anybody else manages to roll that. And then, so there's that, it doesn't really come down to really to timing in a lot of ways because of the fact that uh, or like you're racing to get your 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 point total uh, notified on, on your board when you're when you're the person rolling the dice because of the fact that uh, you know one it doesn't really I mean it sucks if somebody takes away your good score or whatever but a really high score nobody's going to really roll against it I mean because of the fact well they're going to maybe try if they have my cats here they're going to try if they think that you know they just desperately need it or you know to catch up or whatever. But if they take it from you, you still get to take your turn. So in a lot of ways, I've done a lot of things where it's like, you know, it's like, what, are you sure? Sure you don't want to try? Here, I'm moving my guy. Hold on, hold on. This is your window. And it's a better thing, actually, when the other players are, like, kind of, like, trying to decide which one of them is going to roll it first to try to steal it first. And so that, I think timing wise actually is more uh, of, of the game than everything and it's another little level of the game that exists as well and and I you know that's like I said the one thing about push your luck games is like it really doesn't interact with the other people at the table at the time sure they're watching you and watching your roles and like maybe cursing your roles or cheering your roles or what have you but um for them to actually have meaningful decisions to make uh, during the time uh, of when it isn't their turn, time to take any action, is actually really, uh, really. You know, I haven't played a game like this. I mean, there might very well be a game out there that has that in there, but for me, I hadn't experienced it yet. And for that reason alone, um, I think that if you like uh, this type of genre game, if you're a fan of of of, of the, these push your luck type games, I think this is something you definitely want to try out, and I think it's definitely something you're going to want to add to your shelf. I'm super glad uh, that I have this pretty cool looking prototype because it means I can play it whenever I want, and I don't have to worry about when the Kickstarter finally uh, that gets published and 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 this and when I get my own copy at that point. But I'll definitely uh, be playing this one uh, when I have the chance and whenever I can. Uh, in the meantime. So, thank you very much, as always, uh, for watching this video and for putting up with my cat. Um, if you have any questions about the game, by all means, ask away. I'll answer those to the best of my ability. And as always, until the next time we meet, you have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.